Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. Um, we're working on the chapter three problems, the group B, and this series of videos will cover those assigned problems in the digital study guide. And as always, um, when it comes to financial accounting, it's about understanding concepts and applying those concepts to the situation at hand. So even if you're not getting the uh, application part, meaning you know, you're doing the problem and you're not getting the answer, um, it may not be the application, it, it may be the understanding of the concept. So um, even though you can pause and rewind and watch the video again, um, you know, you may have to go back and watch the theory videos and study the textbook a little bit more to be able to understand the concepts and then apply it to the situation. And if you still don't understand the concepts, then you know, feel free to contact an instructor and we'll help you with that. So uh, this here video is for problem... Uh, 51 okay here we go 51 right. um, maybe 51 and 52 we'll see um, it says here Skyway completed the following selected transactions and prepared these uh, adjusting entries during January so these are the entries, the adjusting entries that were made. Okay, number one says state whether the transaction would increase revenues, decrease revenues, increase expenses, decrease expenses, or have no effect. So whether it would increase or decrease revenues or have no effect. Uh, increase or decrease revenues, expenses, or have no effect. If revenues or expenses are affected, give the amount of the impact on revenues or expenses for January. Use the following format for your answer. So they put in the date, and they say increase revenues, and then the effect. Right. Um, I'll work those over here in this empty space, but I'm not obviously going to put in like the date, and I'm just going to say you know increase. You'll see. Um, and then two, it says compute January net income or net loss under the accrual basis of accounting. And then state why the accrual basis of accounting results in an accurate measurement of income. Okay, okay so like um, number one, um, you know, prepaid insurance for January through March was uh, $3,600. Okay, so um, prepaid insurance. And so the uh, uh, entry for that um, would be to um, I mean, we're going to, I mean, we're receiving cash for prepaid insurance, all right? So our entry would be to debit cash, I'm sorry, to uh, debit prepaid insurance and credit cash. So therefore, there is no effect on our revenues or our expenses. So for January 1st, all right, for January 1st, there is no effect. Um, the January 3rd perform services on account okay well if I perform services on account I would be uh, debiting accounts receivable and crediting service revenue okay uh, so I'm that means I would okay so for the third um, I would be Increasing, I'm going to use plus for increase. Well, let me do this a little bit like this. So for the third, for the third, I'm going to increase revenue by 41.50, right? Because I'm performing services on account. You know, I'm making a journal entry. Am I, you know, um, am I affecting cash? No. Am I affecting accounts receivable? Or accounts payable yes accounts receivable is my accounts receivable going up yes so I'm going to debit accounts receivable and uh, credit what I'm performing services so I'm going to credit you know service revenue and so my uh, revenues are going to increase and so therefore um, you know I, the impact on my revenue is an increase by 41 uh, 50. Uh, six purchased office furniture on account. Okay, 
um, since I'm purchasing office furniture on account, you know, that would be an account's payable and office furniture is an asset. So I'm not having any effect on revenues or expenses. All right. Paid property tax expense. All right. Okay. Well, if I'm paying property tax expense, I am crediting my cash, right? Because cash is going out and I'm debiting property tax expense. So my property tax expense, so 1.8, my expenses are going to increase by $1,160. Right. Uh, okay, so purchased office equipment for cash. Again, there's no effect because you know I'm using cash and office equipment, which is a um, an asset account, so there's no effect for that. Perform services and receive cash. Yeah, okay, so I'm receiving cash, I'm debiting my cash, and I'm crediting it since I'm performing service, so it's service revenue. And so my service revenue is increasing. So for 118, I'm going, in, going to increase my revenue by $1,600. Collect it 4,300 on account. You know, there's no effect, right? Because I'm, you know, since I'm collecting cash and it's on account, you know, I'm affecting cash and accounts receivable. So there's no effect on revenues or expenses. 26 paid the accounts payable from the January 6th transaction. Well, if I'm paying cash, cash is going out, and accounts payable is a liability account. So that there's no effect for that transaction. Right, so I'm paying salaries expense, so I'm crediting cash because cash is going out and I'm debiting salary expense. So my salary expense is increasing. So on 130, I am increasing my expense by $1,650. Record an adjusting entry for January insurance expense related to the January 1st transaction. So for the January 1st transaction here, remember we had um, uh, debited prepaid insurance and we had credited cash. All right. And that was no effect, but now we're recording the adjusting entry for the insurance, meaning we had paid 3600 for the prepaid insurance, and now we are um, actually going to uh, expense that. Okay, so how um, we're expensing it by uh, okay, so January through March. So I have January, February, March, so that's three months and 3600. So I have 3600 divided by three, which is $1,200 a month. And I'm adjusting it for the month of January. So my adjustment has to be for $1,200. Okay. So if I'm making the adjustment, that means I'm decreasing my prepaid insurance. So I'm crediting prepaid insurance and I'm going to debit, debits have to equal credits. I'm going to debit, you know, insurance expense for the $1,200. So for 131, I'm increasing my uh, I'm increasing my expense. By twelve hundred dollars. OK. Pause the video and go over that again. Rewind it and watch it again if you didn't understand uh, what I went through in that transaction. But if you've done um, you know, if you study the chapter and you've done the uh, uh, exercises, um, the exercise problems, then you, you understand the, uh, the prepaid expensing and why the expense increases. All right, and then 31 here again, it says it recorded an adjusting entry for unearned revenue now earned. Okay, so if I had unearned revenue, that meant I had a debit to cash and a credit to unearned uh, revenue. It's for 875. Now, if it becomes earned, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I make the adjusting entry, that means I have to debit the unearned revenue for 875 and I credit what? Well, I'm earning the revenue, so I'm, um, I'm going to credit the revenue account for 875. So on 131, I'm going to increase my revenue for 875. And notice that this credit and this debit wash each other out. So I'm left with just the cash and the revenue, as if I, you know, as if I had uh, performed the service and got paid right for it. All right, so um, those are the effects. Um, now it says compute the January income or loss under the uh, accrual accounting. Okay, so for my revenues, I have. So for revenue, I have 4150, and increased revenue 1600, and increased revenue 875. So for my revenues, that comes to five two. Uh, 8, 8 16, 66, 25. For my expenses, I have 1160, 1615, and 1200, which gives me 5, 7, 9, 39, 75. And then, of course, revenues less the expenses of 39, 75 gives me 0, 5, 6, 2, $2,650 of net income. Okay, so all my revenues less my expenses gives me $2,650. All right, statewide the accrual basis of accounting results in an accurate measurement of income. Um, you know, the uh, solution says, um, because it reports revenues when they are earned and expenses when they are incurred, regardless of when cash is received or paid. Okay, and that's an accurate assessment. Okay, um, and that's the whole idea behind the accrual basis. And it also um, allows you to uh, facilitate doing business, meaning, you know, and this is just an aside from this problem. Um, if you read the solution and read that answer, that's that is correct. You know, it allows you to report revenues and expenses when earned, regardless of the effect on cash. But as a quick aside, let's say, um, you know, today, and let's just call today nine four because that's when I'm recording this video. You know, if someone wants to buy something off of me. Um, you know, if I'm working on a strictly cash basis solution, a cash basis, then they have to pay me for that. So I would end up debiting my cash and crediting my revenue. Okay. I mean, that's the transaction. Now, if they don't have the cash, then I can't make the sale. Okay. Um, so if we extend you know, we extend them credit and we deal with things, you know, like on account or on an accrual basis. Well, what that does is on 9-4, now I can go and say, hey, um, I'll extend it on account. So I'm going to debit my accounts receivable um, and credit the revenue. So I'm, I'm still recording the revenue today on 9-4. However, they're not going to pay it until, let's say, 10-4 next month. And on 10-4, when they actually pay it, I'm going to debit my cash and credit my accounts receivable. Okay. And so what that does is it nets out this debit to accounts receivable with this credit to accounts receivable. Okay. Um, you know, the net effect is zero. Okay between the two of them and all that we're left with is the debit to cash and the credit to accounts received um, uh, credit to revenue which is the exact same entry that we have as if we made the cash sale on September 4th 
but notice what you know the difference being is is that you know sure I'm recording the revenue on 94 and that's you know the what the solution says but just as that quick aside notice that it facilitate facilitated doing business I mean here you know they have to have the cash so that I can you know they can purchase it on 94 if they don't have the cash I can't make the sale all right so you know they're gonna go somewhere else but because I'm extending them credit now I'm allow you know and assuming that they have good credit you know I'm allowing them to be able to purchase you know the item and the net effect when they pay it is is that I actually still made the sale I just got paid for it a little bit later down the road now remember that's if they have good credit if they have bad credit then of course I'm not going to uh, extend them credit because why all I'm doing is just letting my merchandise walk out the door you know they're not going to pay for it and I'm never going to get it back so and that's why um, you do credit checks on your uh, you know your customers in order to make sure that they're credit worthy so that you can extend them the, the credit and that allows you to be able to make additional sales okay all right so that's it for uh, 51 and uh, you know this one wasn't that bad so um, I'll see you in the next video for 52